welcome everybody to uh, a new edition of uh, the Rewire Patel uh, post graduation lecture series knowledge series and uh, we are very grateful and uh, happy to have uh, Dr. Pascal Mukherjee back with us for his discourse. He has been with us in the past on a couple of platforms, but we have roped in another young dynamic psychiatrist who's a, a rising star in the IPS scenario, and he's a very dear friend of mine, a very humble and down to earth gentleman, uh, Dr. Amrit Patta Joshi. And uh, he, uh, he will be chairing the session today. Uh, we, we've endeavored to try and bring to you uh, new and cutting edge stuff at the same time trying to keep it simple uh, just so it is relatable to the young psychiatrists who are yet in their training days as well as to the consultants who are uh, in their senior years but they want to get back to academics in an interesting perspective. So today Bhaskar is going to be speaking to us about the neuroscience of dreams and that's the extremely uh, interesting yet uh, very ill understood uh, topic. Uh, we always have seen it from the uh, 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 psychosomatic and the psychological and the psychodynamic perspective, the psychoanalytical perspective, and Freud and stuff like that. But I'll leave Amrit to uh, have a few words with you about that. Uh, it gives me pleasure to introduce Dr. Amrit Patta Joshi to you. He is a professor at uh, High Tech Medical College, Bhubaneswar. He is, like I mentioned to you, a rising star in the IPS. He is a direct council member of the Indian Psychiatric Society. And uh, he is uh, the uh, EC in charge of the National Suicide Prevention Helpline. He has also been very active on the LGBT task force for the last couple of years. And uh, he is still the secretary of that task force. He is the IPS East Zone President Elect. And uh, he is the IPS Odisha State Branch uh, 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 President elect. Sorry, he is the Secretary of IPS. Yes, yes. Sorry, uh, my bad. And he is also uh, yeah, a direct speaker. So okay. I think uh, just about every feather that you could find, he has in his cap already. ंड uh, over to you, Amrit. Thank you so much for first of all. Let me thank you for inviting me for such a you know important session. You know the the and this session is on neuroscience of dreams. Uh, it's something close to my heart because you know my MD thesis has been on sleep, and uh, it it was really tough. You know the the whole thesis polysomnography indicators. I I did on poly psychopharmacology indicators. You know, so that was a very very tough md thesis one of the toughest md thesis i did on sleep but and it is a pleasure to be to, you know associated with bhaskar bhaskar has been a very very close friend you know we fight a lot but it's all virtual no not in the real sense yes. I, we are very very close friends of of the whatsapp groups otherwise you know i, I always look up to him you know so that that's that's a different issue and and chairing a session of bhaskar it's just for the namesake i'll be i'll be as much as a learner like anybody else in the whole audience he brings some remarkable dimension to anything he speaks on it's different you know why i like about what i what the most the best part about him he 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 takes no hostages he just you know hits everybody on the face I, and i think everybody has a unique style of presentation some people are you know try to take everybody and and many times we fail in doing so bhaskar does not mince words no, he tells what he thinks, and I think let let me speak something about dreams. Actually, then I'll introduce Bhaskar to everybody. So, actually, if you look at dreams, they are the most remarkable experiment in neuroscience. You know, conducted every night. Every night we sleep. If the world has five hundred crore people, we have five hundred crore people experimenting with their dream, and in every possible position. There is no fixed position. Where if I sleep like this, I'll have it. You know, 
So that's the most unique experiment in, in the human brain that occurs every day. And these show that the brain, disconnected from the actual environment, can generate by itself an entire world of conscious experiences. You know, I have I see a lot of people who talk about you know rats chasing them, they sinking down, and they actually feel that that's happening, and they react to it emotionally, cognitively, you know, physically, physiologically, whatever you tell that that I think Dr. Bhaskar will be speaking on those things. But that, that those experiences are very very unique, and 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 sometimes they're very very emotionally charged also, and. If you look at the whole content analysis and development studies, you know, these, these have furthered our understanding of dreams phenomenology. If you look at phenomenological studies of dream, the analysis of the content, a lot of people come to me and ask, what is the significance of the dream that I'm falling down? What is the, what is the significance of the dream that somebody is chasing me? And if I look at different, you know, I've tried to analyze a lot of things, the dreams when somebody is depressed, the dream when somebody is manic, the dream when somebody is anxious, they all they all little different, and, and somewhere you can understand the mood state. The, the whole lot of things. If, if you really get into dream, it's it's a dreamy world again. In parallel, if you look at in parallel what the neurobiology and all brain lesion studies, functional imaging, and and neurophysiological studies have advanced our knowledge of these neural basis of dreaming. Dreaming is not just a simple phenomenon as everybody thinks. There's a huge neural basis to it. So I think why the dreams decrease, why the dreams increase, why the frequency of dreams increase, why, you know, the, 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 what is the significance of dreams? Everything about dreams, I think Bhaskar, Dr. Bhaskar will be the best judge on it. He'll be speaking a lot on this and I think he'll clear a lot of doubts about the, the whole phenomenon of dreams, the neurobiological basis, how they are connected, what is their significance. As a clinician, I would always love to understand what is the significance to us in what way, what, you know, there are certain drugs which increase the dreams, there are certain drugs which decrease the dreams, you know, and sometimes I claim that I can change your dreams also, and I have managed to change a few bit of dreams in some people, and so let us hear about Bhaskar, can I read something about Bhaskar, he has given his own, you know, so Dr. Bhaskar Mukherjee, I'm a student of psychiatry, the medical discipline uh, dealing with full working and dysfunction of brain. So molecular biology is where I feel most comfortable. And for me, psychiatry is molecular psychiatry. I love to understand it, evaluate the pathophysiological basis of psychiatric symptoms, both macroscopically and microscopically, going from connectomics to genomics. My interest areas are treatment resistance in psychiatry and trans-diagnostic understandings of psychiatry. And my life's goal is to make psychiatry regain the master spot in medicine, a spot reserved for the medical specialty dealing with the master organ of body. So we all think like that. We want to make psychiatry to the you know, focus. And many of us I have been able to get psychiatry back into focus. We have different ways, different means, but the whole common goal is the same. So Bhaskar, the stage is all set for you. Welcome you to this whole session. Okay, thank you for the session. And thank you for not giving the elaborate introduction, not needed. For the purpose of this discussion, I am just a student of neuroscience like all of you and senior to some, junior to some, peer to some. That's all. That is the whole point of this lecture because today we are going to discuss and I have told Rasmin, Dr. Rasmin that this time I am going to discuss. I am not going to present any picture because in creating a PowerPoint and presenting a PowerPoint, we have forgotten the idea of in this type of interaction. The idea is a bi-directional communication rather than one person reading a slide and one person or a group of person just listening to it. So to give a break from the monotony, I would talk and you are welcome to interrupt my talk. So dreams, Amrit has given a good idea that there are thousands or of dreams every night in all 7.5 billion people. 
तो हाउ कैन दे आर बी अ सिंगल न्यूरो साइंस ऑफ ड्रीम और इज दे आर एनी बेसिस ऑफ द न्यूरो साइंस ऑफ ड्रीम सो लेट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दे फर्स्ट वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट Every human experience, be it dream or be it our conscious experience of reality, is layered. For I would show the conscious reality first, so that our foray into the dream world would be clearer. Let's say I am. now sitting in the medical college quarter where i teach i am seeing in front of a screen and i am trying to talk about neuroscience of dream so that would be my experience of reality but is it the whole reality i am bringing my own point of view and my own so far acquired learning into this experience number 1 number 2 i am bringing my innate learning which is unique one else's reality as it possible so amrit is experiencing a different reality others are experiencing a different reality everyone else who are listening to this lecture are going to experience a different reality because that is how human being parsi brain reflexes come into play then the innate might be our own inheritance or our racial inheritance then comes our personal experiences and learning then comes our that moment body state and that moment various thing that is affecting our body and finally we see our own personalized dream so standing there to understand these layered experiences we have to understand the various component to it so this time i am going from monologue to dialogue do you people think that human being have innate learning just like animals can swim without learning to swim does human being have any innate learning any yes. any response yes yes master yes, boss yes which which are those innate learnings uh, that's why i was not answering <laughs> okay no but but i think i think one uh, if i may remember one of the things we have are mirror neurons in our mm -hmm. brain mm -hmm. so when we see somebody else doing something and we see it's a good thing of doing we copy it quickly no but i am asking about innate learning are there yeah. learning processes deeply is it in, ingrained in our brain which is now yeah. developing genetically no but but when i'm saying i'm just trying to understand mm. please correct me if mm. i'm wrong 
Mm-hmm. If I see uh, if I see another person of another animal of my species doing a behavior mm-hmm. and I copy it, isn't that that's not innate? You will say that is not innate learning. That is acquired learning. But but that the ability to do that isn't that innate. Mm-hmm. The ability to mimic is innate to every animal being. Every animal being who has okay. a central nervous system. are able to mimic self so mimic is a kind of innate learning of every animal being but as a human being i am asking as a human being unique species do you have do we have some innate uh, learning to think uh, about our galaxy? thoughts mm-hmm. to think about our own thoughts yes that is one and dr i don't know who is galaxy z fold 5 uh, 53 they have answered one question yes infant suckling is one but it is not uniquely human human infant suckling is actually shared by every mammal so yes dr uh, milina ref- these are reflexes these are genetically determined reflexes means the our ancestors at one point of time actively learned these reflexes but after few hundred generations now these reflex pathways are fixed in our brain and every human being are born with these reflexes so power of deduction intuition sometimes actually i would say intuition is not a right word the right word would be associative learning it is learning but again it can be trained uh, it is about, uh, partly in hmm. yes 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 vital so i was saying uh, ability to recognize patterns yes that is one thing that is a uh, innate thing but again it is not innately human uniquely that are uniquely human pattern recognition is something that every mammalian brain and reptilian brain does even i would say insect brain does too because honey bees communicate to each other through various intricate flying pattern so pattern recognition is something which is innate learning of almost every animal species so standing there uniquely human would be to t- fast a lot of things but most rec- interestingly would be number 1 bipedal walking no human infant needs to t- be taught how to walk in that sense every developmental milestone that a kid achieves is actually innate learning a human baby doesn't need to be taught how to speak it needs to be taught what to speak means language is acquired if a human bo- uh, 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 baby sees surrounding people talking bengali the uh, baby would learn bengali hindi would learn hindi police would learn police and various other things but the ability to produce speeches that is innate learning for human being our uh, ability to empathize and respond to social cues it is a innate learning but it is not uniquely human being any any animal which forms society would have ability to empathize and social cues so dr thapar it was a innate learning good enough but it is not really innate learning uniquely to human okay so our developmental milestones which a human baby normally achieve are innate learning so why i am talking about innate learning in dream because they are these are useful innate learning that human brain exhibits but there are thousands of innate learning which human brain doesn't 
exist exhibit anymore because they are pointless now pointless means they have they serve no active purpose in our normal day to day activity these reflexes are now suppressed by human being these are known as vestigial response hypnic jerk perhaps is the most well known of this vestigial responses hypnic jerk is a jerk a physiological myoclonus which happens before sleep now vestigial reflex are one of the most understood ways of dream now what vestigial reflexes and how how are human civilization or rather i would say our human species is almost 15 million years old if not more our species probably originated more yeah much earlier but we have evidence till 15 million years so in this 15 million years this species has learned multiple this type of complex behaviors which has become cerebral reflexes some of them are still in use today like speaking like bipedal walking like in animal being only the basic survival skill is taught but only in human all the previously acquired knowledge is being transferred to the later generation so these are useful but there are various vestigial reflexes or various complex behavioral motor and other reflexes that we learned that are not in use today the first of each would be the hypnic jar and its original sleep component hypnic jar is theorized to be one of the first complex motor reflexes that our species learned it learned this reflex when it was still a tree dwelling animal now i don't know how many of you have seen a langur or a indian monkey sleep if you see them you would find out that they periodically jerk in their sleep because in them this reflex in its active use what happens when a tree dwelling animal goes to sleep in nrem sleep it would maintain its posture its muscle tone and there is no chance of falling from tree but in rem sleep whenever it enters rem sleep it would have sleep paralysis and those sleep paralysis would induce loss of muscle tone loss of muscle control and there is high chance of falling from tree so to counter act that they learned a reflex a motor and behavioral reflex where there is flexor spasm of whole body whenever they enter rem sleep this is not required in us in this is now not employed because human being is now a bipedal animal but the reflex pathway still persists in human being and that is why when a human being goes into rem sleep there is a chance that this latent reflex would activate now 
whenever I am saying that this latent and vestigial reflex would get activated in some, the clinical question would be with whom, whom, some means who, who are more vulnerable in developing these responses. Those brain who have decreased functional capacity, those brain who have hyperactivity of the autonomic nervous system, those brain who have recent reduction of brain's normal functional capacity are more prone towards development of this type of responses. So, who are these people? Our so-called patients of anxiety and depression. If you ask each of your patients who are coming to your clinic of with symptom of, symptom of anxiety and symptom of depression, you would find out that overwhelming majority of them have high number of hypnic jerk. But hypnic jerk occur when the person is still awake. These people have reduced REM latency and they, instead of fast 90 minutes in REM, they directly go into REM. And so they experience hypnic jerk when they are still awake. But what happens when hypnic jerk like cerebral response activates in in, in uh, REM sleep after a period of in REM sleep. The person is soundly asleep then. So the brain would in, imagine itself in a similar situation. It, this reflex activation at that time would mean the person would see that they are falling from something, they are falling into something and similar thing. Now, this is the theme. Now, not all people fall from tree in their dream. Some fall from roof, some fall from helicopter, some fall from aeroplane, some fall from unknown location, but they feel a sinking feeling they, and they experience the imagery of fall. So, theme is fixed by innate learning. But what would be that person's specific dream content would be determined by their acquired learning, what they have learned in their life. Some people are more afraid of falling from their aeroplane and probably are frequent flyer, they might have a more chance of falling from airplane. Some have more propensity to see dream of drowning in sand or water. Again, that depends on personal experiences and personal learnings. So this is one example of how our layered brain experiences and our layered brain learning produces our dream realities. Now, the second, this is the first one. Now comes the second. The second reflex that we acquire is again a developmental origin. We may imagine a tree dwelling and uh, from tree dwelling stage, we went into a planet dwelling, sometimes bipedal, sometimes four, uh, working on all four feet animal. So this animal at that developmental stage had not much hunting power, not much power to protect itself. It, it didn't have strong jaw bones 
or strong hands or other things that might protect itself so it was most of, more of a scavenger type of animal along with a bottom feeder of earth ecological pyramid so most of their time were spent in avoiding predators scanning their surrounding environment and running away from their predators and scavenging so what can we expect which or what are what kind of reflex can we expect from this stage scanning of peripheral environment noticing of any change of peripheral environment by hyper vigilance and running or avoiding the predators so these pathways when performed by successive generations of human being became a reflex pathway in brain but again now at present we are mostly apex predator of earth ecological pyramid we don't need this type of responses so this response this second response is also mostly suppressed but unlike the hypnic jack one it comes into our conscious period too when we are getting threatened or when we are facing low brain functional reserve in due to any condition or when we are in extreme fatigue this response comes into our conscious experience too and we start hyper vigilance we start noticing every amount of details we start getting triggered by it and we try to flee from the situation now this reflex when gets converted into rem switch of rem uh, uh, dream or gets switch on during rem what would happen the person would see that they are being chased by something now what would be that something is again dependent on that person's unique experience for example let's say a student is mortally afraid of mathematics that student would see that he or she is being chased by mathematics teacher or mathematics group some would be afraid of other thing and they would be seeing seeing that they are being chased by those thing most of us are afraid of our past negative events so repeated flashback of past negative events is a common thing and again those people who are so called anxious or depressed they would experience it more and again whenever there is extreme autonomic activation there would be experience of these things more the third evolutionary reflex would be those evolutionary reflex where human being started coming together and from this area these reflexes are experience both in conscious state and in dream state the this reflex would be known would be known as early bereavement early separation and other kind of reflexes when human being first started society 
it actually started forming a super organism out of a few single human a group of humans can chase down any animal a group of human being can fight with any animal a group of human being together can master most of the harsh animals so when human being at some evolutionary stages started to come together their survival instinct made them stay together and this successive generation of staying together has created a strong reflex where human being doesn't like to be left alone human being doesn't like to leave alone human being needs contact with others of its kind and this reflex is present in every one of us but those who have reduced cerebral functionality manifesting as anxiety and depression and psychosis and mania would experience this more they in that dream their prominent theme would be lo losing someone or getting lost some now where they would be getting lost or whom they would be losing depending is uh, is going to be dependent on their personal life learning then comes the fourth evolutionary reflex the fourth evolutionary reflex is those periods when human being have come together but haven't really advanced technologically to protect itself at night at night though the human beings are very defenseless in absence of its technology it doesn't have night vision it doesn't have any way to defend itself it can only stay together in a shelter and try to avoid the predators before advent of fire no human being was sure enough to live the next day when he or she was going to sleep so for that successive generations of human being when they actually felt this type of fears and they actively engage this type of fear a few reflex pathways originated in brain which made human being fearful of that and even now we can see it in many of us as well as we can see it more in those patients of anxiety and depression and we gave them the fancy name of nyctophobia but this feeling this internal or sorry a con innate learning when it gets activated during rem sleep it comes as pictures of something scary what would be some that scary thing would be again dependent on our personal learning but it would always be scary we might be seeing ghosts we might be seeing something which has deeply disturbed us but we would see very scary things then the blood reflex or the strong reaction associated with blood that again is another innate reflex and that comes into play as one of the innate learnings some human being would have feeling of elation associated with 
this blood, the seeing bloods, some would have feeling of dread associated with it. So these are few innate learning that actually shape our dreams. And they are repeated as single theme or they are combined. Many of our patients would report, they would see a scary scene, they would try to run away from the scene and they would then drown into something or the other. This, that, this thing is actually combination of these themes and giving human being a complete story. So this is basically how the theme of dream is being set up. Now standing there, our next question would be, who are vulnerable? We have already seen it. So does it have any treatment significance? Does it have any therapeutic significance? Does it have any prognostic significance? What do you think? Again, I would like this to be a dialogue. I have given you a basic idea of the theme. Now, I am inviting others to part, take part in the exercise and find out the prognostic significance, the therapeutic significance, and the clinical significance of these themes. Any idea of the therapeutic significance? Anyone? Come on, there are a lot of PG students. You can all please unmute and talk. Bhaskar is the most you know affable man. You can always talk. You can ask anything you want. So please. Yes. Can you can you repeat the question, yes. Bhaskar? The question is, I have given you a basic idea of the things that dictate our dreams, and I have shown you that these themes are associated with various evolutionary reflex. These themes are more seen in deficit functional state of brain, means those patients who are showing anxiety and depression. So now I would like you to come up with the therapeutic significance, the prognostic significance of these themes. Let's say I'm giving you a hypothetical situation. You are seeing a patient of anxiety who are reporting few of these things in their dream. So when you start the treatment, would you do anything directed towards these things? Or are you going to monitor these things for any help in your treatment? What do you do? This is just a theoretical exercise to make you understand our brain more, nothing more. Actually, yes, only beta blocker. Milina again is good answer, beta blocker, but only beta blocker. SNRI. SNRI would increase this phenomena or decrease this phenomena? There would be some initial uh, use, rather, uh, and in future, late use. Initially, SNRI would increase this because SNRI Baskar, is Baskar, autonomic system. Bhaskar, why is voice kyun break? Kar raha hai? Mujhe hi lag raha hai voice break? Kar raha hai, kuch aur kuch, I think voice is not coming very clear. Voice, uh, se yes, yes, it's breaking, sir. It's breaking. Yeah, yeah, it's breaking, right? We're not able to, that's, that's where the confusion is. It's break. Kar raha hai. Toh, video off, you can see the network is slow. Ga network is hypnic jerks. Are <laughs> now it's okay, sir. Now it's okay. 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 Yeah, yeah. You can speak, Bhaskar. Tell, boss. Yeah, At the end, you will summarize everything Bhaskar has told. 
भास्कर को इंटरनेट ही रोक सकता है और कुछ नहीं <laughs> तब तक चेयरपर्सन आप ही बता दो आपने क्या सीखा हैं आप ही बता दो आपने क्या सीखा आज अभी तो हम लोग थेरेपेटिक वे पे बात कर रहे थे बीटा ब्लॉकर किसी ने बोला ऐसे नरे पे किसी ने बात किया लेट अस सी व्हाट पीपल आर टॉकिंग अबाउट बट दिस इज वेरी बट दिस इज इंटरेस्टिंग व्हाट द ब्यूटीफुली ही ब्रॉट आउट हिप्निक जर्क्स या व्हाट इज द रोल ऑफ हिप्निक जर्क्स उसके बाद वो अचानक से रिस्टार्ट करने लगा कब तक रियल सिनारियो in most of our patients you would see a patient of anxiety or depression comes to you and reports few of the themes recurrently occurring in their dream so now my question would be would you do something about these themes number 1 number 2 can we use these themes as prognostic indicator and number 3 can treating these phenomena increase our chances of success what do you think and you can give any answer i am not your examiner and i am unlikely to be your md examiner ever because koi mujhe nahi bulayega aur usse bhi zyada ye hai ke You can be sure that मैं अगर आया तो पास कर दूंगा So standing there, <laughs> तुम लोग directly बोलो कि क्या है hmm. These are innate, yes. Hmm. किसने कुछ बोला Hmm. They would be unable to, so unable to treatment. Okay. Someone has said these are innate, so you don't think. it would be amenable to treatment hmm speech is innate learning but speech therapy works doesn't it so innate learning too can be improved again speech is innate but when there is lendu kleppner syndrome that innate ability is lost so innate ability can be damaged or can be enhanced by external measures so standing there think again can we change this can we if we change it can i ask you something sure sure so i found this very fascinating which you said that there's a this vestigial reflex one was this uh, hypnic jerk they beautifully explained i really like it it made a lot of sense to me now all the you know anxiety patients do present with lot of hypnic jerks the hmm. more autonomic result there is there in those patients you see this hmm. and you could not make out ki aisa kyun ho raha hai yes it made lot of sense to me it was beautiful hmm. very nice hmm. like they you talk about hyper vigilance drive hyper vigilance hmm. drive hmm. hyper vigilance drive you see a lot in schizophrenia right we see a lot in 
almost every serious so called mental disorder every everything so called in but 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 especially for especially for schizophrenia when you read about schizophrenia one of the theories mm. of schizophrenia is they are mm. unable to uh, ignore trivial mm. stimuli so they yes. all, they the brain is processing all kinds of stimuli all happening mm. what noise kyun aaya wo bell kyun baja wo mujhe kyun dekha wo kyun aasa ah. everything yes. so they are hyper vigilant about it yeah. so you are what you are trying to say is that the in these patients i think we when we are all stressed suppose i am stressed mm. Yes, in a class now I'm speaking. Those people start laughing. Suddenly, I will become hyper vigilant. Hmm. Right. But for these people, it is triggered without any stress. Any, so maybe, maybe, any discernible situation without yes. any external situation, their brain is always in hyper vigilant mode. Hyper vigilant. Not only these, these people, so-called OCD people, all of them are hyper vigilant. Right. 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 So, so, but, but we can work on this. Yes. Many. Uh, that is why I am asking you to come up with because I have given all the hints. So you actually dentist... use the you actually use meds to treat this. Ah, so that's what I'm saying. So when we use antipsychotics, what we are doing is we are trying to reduce the hyper vigilance in these patients. Hmm. Hmm. and that's a hypervigilance that's why antipsychotics also works in ocd they also work in patients of anxiety disorder social anxiety disorder because they are panicking they are fearful hmm. and they work does it make yes. sense yes yes so antipsychotic is one but nilina has given a very good answer yes two she has actually given two and two right answers number one they are bad prognostic factors if a patient presents with lots of these themes in their dream you would find out that they are going to persist throughout their life these people would improve less these people would would actually relapse more this is one thing number 2 is toning down adrenergic drive again this is the basic thing basic. antipsychotics are acute suppressants of adrenergic drive various drugs wh which are adrenergic blocker actually work in this condition bisal was talking about social anxiety and other thing let's think about ptsd in ptsd the same thing happens mm -hmm. and giving prazosin in ptsd or nightmares works because of the same thing it tones down the adrenergic drive then comes clonidine clonidine also does the same thing clonidine also causes toning down of adrenergic drive and so clonidine is also effective in these conditions so there are lots of drugs which are working this way but our usual antidepressant they are reverse inhibitors means they are agonistic inhibitor they chronically stimulate adrenergic drive leading to toning down of adrenergic drive at a later stage so normally what happens is when we give antidepressants to a patients specifically those antidepressants which induce brains activity from very fast day of their work for example snri for example there are drugs which are hyper stimulants like uh, the methylphenidate or modafinil uh, the mau, mau inhibitors these drugs would initially increase adrenergic drive these patients have already low rem latency so they are rem adrenergic drive would increase and so our patient would complain that dr saab apne dawai diya aur usse ye dreams zyada aane lage and we would be thinking ye kya ho gaya this is actually just a physiological response jiska ho raha hai if they are given drugs which suppress adrenergic drive then this would go go and later 
without those adrenergic suppression drugs to due to chronic stimulation or the adrenergic drive would go into hypotonia and ultimately nightmares and these type of dreams would subside themselves that is how antidepressants on acute use increase this type of themes of dream and later they decrease this type of dreams so uh, among all the drugs bhaskar uh, hmm. i think ssri is the most notorious what do you what is your experience um, ssri snri both snri hmm. is actually specifically those which induces lazed uh, 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 sleep they are most prominent followed by snri ssri snri dono hi karta hai mitrazapine as it has its own sedative property this causes less of this thing but it in those patients who have hyperactivity of either function or formation of autonomic nervous system in them mitazapine can also do this and having these frequent themes in their dream means the person is very much prone to con continuous relapses and these are the people who have activation with ssri snri these are the people who would have akathisia with aripiprazole and other thing so suppose you have to can i can i ask a question sir if you don't know sure suppose somebody you be be we know that somebody is you know has a very good response to a ssri and we need to give ssri but the patient mm. comes and complains to us about lot of dreams you know dreams have increased so what is mm. the what, what what do you use to suppress the dream because many times we have to you know night time there are multiple drugs that we can use we can suppress rem by yes. giving sedatives be it z class be it uh, benzodiazepines anything can actually suppress rem number 1 number 2 we can blunt the autonomic nervous system by giving night time clonidine night time prazosin or by giving non synaptic beta blocker at night the non synaptic beta blocker means propranolol at night has sometimes paradoxical effect why because propranolol controls only beta areas now the alpha areas go unnoticed so in some patients who have problem in alpha receptor or who has mutation in alpha receptor area causing autonomic hyperactivity those patient would actually be disinhibited by beta blocker and so in a rare percentage of patient giving propranolol might increase the nightmare so then we have to understand k is ka alpha receptor re kuch problem hai let's give them alpha something alpha blockers and they works properly what is what is your view on agomelatin agomelatin so again very good is agomelatin again is a good one agomelatin actually works by mitrogenic pathway and being mitrogenic pathway it actually would cause decrease of this phenomena because melatonin is again a adrenergic drive suppressant now uh, there again there is a very good question by nilina again any role of memory formation, memory formation yeah. but memory formation has multiple role here which area you are concentrating on you have to ask that because yes memory formation has a role but which area you want to talk about the response to memory formation the memory formation pathway involving negative memory or memories which are painful the memory formation pathway involving memories which are pleasurable because all of these have an effect so you have to specify more there is role of memory formation but memory formation has is actually a huge chapter 
if we someday really go into it it would take at least 3 to 4 days lecture amygdala related memory amygdala related memory she is asking amygdala related memory yes amygdala related memories would be those acquired i was talking about uniquely personal learning right now uniquely personal learning would give the team the full body now this uniquely personal learning have amygdala related memory formation in it so those things which imprint our amygdala system which imprint which stimulates our amygdala fear response would produce this type of in uh, acquired learning which would form the body of the reflex means theme is just the skeleton just the bare minimum okay chasing theme is chasing but what is chasing would be depending on dependent on those thing okay ha ah. next question any more questions question nahi ho raha hai question nahi ho to acha nahi lagta vishal boss any question from your side no boss no questions main pehle isi ko digest kar raha hu <laughs> this actually is evolutionary basis of human behavior and if we think this way many of the questions would get answered yeah this is very this is very good take interesting take it's very different take on oh. um sir i'd like to ask something uh, yes please yes uh hello please 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 ask yes yes so what uh, i wanted to ask was ki if we are trying to uh, reduce the hyper vigilance by giving adrenergic blockers uh, so is there any adrenergic that... blocker we are we can reduce hyper vigilance by actually multiple way okay. we um, uh, if we think hyper vigilance as a brain function then every brain function has a opposite equal and opposite antagonistic action hyper the opposite action of hyper vigilance is fear resolution threat resolution or threat appraisal psychological term hai kya karu kya bhi tak neuroscience mein iska term nahi aaya but the you can understand the action okay yes yes uh, learning about that danger and getting assured that it's not a danger so this we can increase power of this system and hypervigilance would reduce then hypervigilance can be reduced by decreasing cerebral function so okay. any drug that decrease cerebral function would reduce hypervigilance for example let's say anti epileptic anti epileptics has at core of their action they reduce cerebral action cerebral activity so mm. they would be able to suppress hyper vigilance then would come anti psychotic anti psychotics are drugs which reduce cellular responses okay it makes cells less excitable so again anti psychotics would mm. work this way and make brain less responsive and reduce hyper vigilance mm. and the psychotics are also suppressant of adrenergic drive and by that way too they cause reduce hyper vigilance oh. then comes direct adrenergic blockers they would again reduce hyper vigilance so there are oh. multiple way by which we can reduce hyper vigilance and that is why psychiatry mein sabdak sab kuch karta hai बट मेलाटोनिन decreases these 
not by dream separation or rem separation it causes this by reduction of autonomic tone melatonin is central suppressant of central autonomic grid central autonomic grid is actually a very less known entity it is a grid which connects hypothalamus with brain stem deep autonomic nuclei with basal ganglia with thalamus with possibly amygdala and other parts of limbic system this is a grid which controls activation and also various function of autonomic nervous system probably this is the grid which produces the hyper excitability the irritability the hyper vigilance and the reduction of sleep in mania and psychosis this probably is the grid which produces akathisia this probably is the grid which produces paroxysmal sympathetic hyperactivity in head trauma or post uh, uh, encephalopathy state or simply the brother of akathisia so this is a very important grid about which we talk very less now melatonin is one of the central suppressor of this grid and by suppressing this grid it would reduce the hyperactivity and probably this is one of the mechanism by which melatonin has a delirium protection action delir or delirium suppression action as well as sepsis sepsis suppression action because this central autonomic grid is also related to sepsis okay thank you thank you so so uh, this was the questions and uh, this is the answer of nirnida now you asked okay um, अभी तो मैं भूल गया क्या एक ही आंसर तुम लोगों ने एक ही क्वेश्चन किया था एक्चुअली रेम के ऊपर मैंने एक का आंसर दिया दूसरे का आंसर भूल गया प्लीज आस्क अगेन रिगार्डिंग द रेम पैरालिसिस आई सेड यस रेम पैरालिसिस रेम पैरालिसिस में क्या होगा रेम पैरालिसिस इज एक्चुअली स्लीप पैरालिसिस बिकॉज़ एट दैट स्टेज ऑफ रेम देयर इज इंक्रीज intense sympathetic activity which causes pre ganglionic inhibition of motor movement now that can be reduced by drugs by working in these areas but which melatonin has an effect here by that central autonomic grid activity but which are the other drugs that we don't know yet their exact mechanism of action i haven't found out yet another question back to the chat box will, will it be therapeutically <laughs> relevant to actually reduce the duration of rem paralysis and uh, like it can lead to daytime sleepiness agar uh, uh, rem depends can... it would be highly dependent on individual for some individual rem is more and all of the psychiatric symptoms i am not calling them diseases because they are not diseases they are just symptoms so all of the psychiatric symptoms they are actually associated with increased rem so by in these people suppressing rem has is its utility but in normal person if we suppress rem then there is multiple bad effect number 1 the brain's ability to remember things the memory consolidation and other things would be much less the brain's fatigability would increase there would be daytime sleepiness and ultimately there would be induction of a low functional state in brain now i don't know your name sukash thank you uh, no no uh, Zero uh, B D A E seven A four. He or she has asked how to decide when to prescribe 
medications for dream and when to wait for dreams to subside on his own here psychiatry has an answer if it is impairing impairing person's well being they treat it or if the person is agreeable to wait for some time and try auto resolution then we sh uh, should practice master lean activity so ideally it would be a the joint decision of patient and doctor and we can wait or we can suppress depends on patient's uh, uh, how much uncomfortable patient is feeling with it now low rem rem latency is a marker of depression it's not a marker of depression ideally dr thakur has asked it it is a marker of decreased functionality of brain brain does a lot of maintenance activity during rem sleep so when brain gets functionally impaired there is the functionality of brain is jeopardized then brain needs to work more on maintenance and brain needs to work more on clearing the debris increasing glymphatic glim system system activity increasing csf flow increasing blood circulation and other thing rem is one important aspect of that maintenance but that that is why rem latency actually is a marker of low functional activity of brain it might express as depression it might express as anxiety it might express as as uh, psychosis anything uh the thing is my take on lucid dreaming lucid dreaming means actually if we go via textbook then lucid dreaming means the person has started dreaming while partially awake that means there is low rem latency and rem has started early means these are the people who has decreased cerebral functionality are carrying genetic vulnerability to all psychiatric symptoms but again in polygenetic diseases the low functional state doesn't translate into invariable disease variably disease production here the margin between carrier and disease is blurred so some of them would continue with their low functionality throughout the life and would not develop anything except lucid dreaming and some of them would progress towards sleep disturbances finally various parasomnia and incomplete arousal and along with that various psychiatric symptoms so this would be the lucid dreaming another manifestation of low rem latency now deep sleep means which i don't know slow wave sleep or deep sleep must be meaning slow wave sleep hmm so if it is slow wave sleep slow wave sleep actually is a state where brain the doesn't do maintenance activity rather it goes into resting mode and being in resting mode it goes into various kind of cellular homeostatic action, uh, activity means this is the time when protein production is increased protein utilization is increased various long term epigenetic change is happening so whether disrupting this slow wave sleep and changing it or modifying it would have some effect it should but we haven't gone deeper into slow wave sleep yet so our idea is primitive at its best oh ah uh, no 
is it not the cause of feeling it is actually a low functional state brain is conserving its energy brain is doing some long term maintenance work but would that be beneficial or not that is something we don't know yet because frankly how much brain works in that area what happens and what are the things we still are not clear the main problem we have is our lack of live brain activity monitor there is just early stage ke hum log abhi patient ko pet mein pet mein ya spake machine mein sula kar bol sakte hain ki so jao bhai tumhara brain activity dekhna hai but we cannot see the live activity of individual neurons aur jab tak wo nahi aayega we would never be able to tell what happens in slow wave sleep because it is a low functional state in high functional state there are ways we can indirectly measure that so now nilina has asked uh, has asked another question inducing lucid dreaming as a treatment for light nightmare lucid dreaming is partly controllable so uh get that way treatment for nightmares is being claimed by many but biologically speaking i don't think it is really effective but i have not tried in any any of my patient and i have not come across any concrete data which proves it beyond doubt that it helps or which proves it beyond doubt that it doesn't help so standing there i would say that scientific logic says that lucid dreaming as a treatment for nightmare should not be very effective but ultimately what would come and how we would find out that whether it helps or not is still a few research papers ahead any other questions i am finding it interesting we are finding it interesting question. but i think <laughs> we have crossed 20 25 minutes past the post and to make it oh. more interesting i think we should take a pause nilina uh, uh, nilina you, 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 you made, actually haven't bothered you made bhaskar smile you made bhaskar actually smile so that's that's a rare thing and that's a difficult task you asked a lot of questions and you made it more stimulating thank you so uh, much sir i am it's a pleasure it's a pleasure to have a lot of people asking and questions i like question that's questions fine. are like food for me Bask- so a special Give award from uh, bhaskar to you uh, when, when you meet him next okay <laughs> thank you so much a special thank award theek hai i i am uh, i am flattered thank you yeah you bhaskar no, please is, remember you are giving a foodie his favorite food nothing more that, that, that's more than enough just just your a little bit of your knowledge is more more than anything people would want oh. so it, it was a wonderful 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 talk lot of interactions you know my close friend vishal was on the way on the car and you know on into it so it was lovely having you vishal lot of questions mm. lot of answers you know from neurobiology to the hypnic reflexes to the bereavement reflexes to the you know pathways to the drugs to you know everything i think i think we managed to cover a lot of things uh, honestly it was not yes. one dimensional it, it was great because we learned there was some clinical relevance from the history to the geography to monkeys to myself everything everything we covered a lot of things anxiety depression i think i, I think that this that's how a lecture should be actually you know you at the end of the day you go away taking something not just learning the pathways but how to manipulate the pathways to get better results to a patient that that's that's what and what questions to ask when you are giving benzodiazepines you only talk about the number of hours we never talk about dreams i think one of the most distressing things i see when i give people antidepressants anti you know benzodiazepines are about dreams and if if you care to ask they'll care to answer and then you care to take care of your patients that that's what i think i felt when you do a lecture and that's what bhaskar has managed to cover thank you so much bhaskar for being so great as you are always and over to my dear friend dr rashmin <laughs> dr rashmin yes thank you uh 
thank you very much uh, bhaskar as usual was brilliant and uh, you put a very interesting spin to the entire perspective of the neurobiology of dreams and uh, it's an area which probably has not been paid adequate amount of attention to and uh, this was uh, i think a very good attempt by him for us to relook at it uh, 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 from a very very scientific perspective and uh, of course uh, amrit and his trademark uh, non challenge casual attitude managed to navigate the entire sort of questions and discussion quite well and uh, it was a very interesting interaction because this is not the usual format more often than not it's a didactic lecture but uh, this was very interactive and uh, bhaskar managed to find uh, some kind of a sensible balance between a discourse and uh, a discussion both so uh, kudos to you for that bhaskar and uh, you continue to surprise us every time we have you on this platform and on many others as well and uh, of course the audience was brilliant they were all very interactive they posed very interesting questions and uh, i think that's what adds a lot of value to this kind of an event kind of a program and uh, it's for you guys that we have this program and it's for you guys that we continue to Uh, bring these kind of interactions with uh, intellectuals such as Bhaskar and Amrit, then uh, we are glad that uh, you continue to be a part of our initiative. And uh, I, I take this opportunity to thank Sun Pharma for continuing to provide us with the support that they do, and all the PG students who have so actively participated in this uh, lecture series. And we hope that we shall see you in the future events as well. and i uh, once again thank bhaskar and uh, amrit to take the time out from their schedules and be with us and uh, despite of what amrit said to you at the beginning uh, we hope to see them both again with us time and again right thank you very much and uh, i wish you all a good evening thank you thank you so much thank you bye bye thank you bye bye bye